I'm going to put this camera inside my water heater because there's something I think you guys will find interesting. Hey guys, welcome back. It does not matter if you own a travel trailer, a fifth wheel, a camper van, or a motor home. It doesn't even matter what type of water heater you have. As water is heated in your water heater, it leaves behind dissolved solids, which can build up over time and affect water heater efficiency and disrupt water flow. So today I'm gonna to show you everything you need to know to clean out an RV water heater. And then at the end of the video, we're gonna put a camera inside the water heater tank to show you how well this process works. So the first question some of you may have is how often do I need to clean my water heater? The internet will tell you every two years. I know a lot of knowledgeable RVers that do it every two years. Personally, I do it once a year because it's an easy process to double up on when you're winterizing or dewinterizing because your water heater needs to be emptied first. Either way is perfectly fine. Now, if you're a full-time RVer, keep in mind that you will be without your water heater for about eight hours. So a good time to do this is after your evening showers, when you go to bed because you don't need hot water while you're sleeping. The process of cleaning your water heater tank is very simple, but I will say that it is a little bit different than cleaning, for example, your fresh water tank. Reason number one, RV fresh water tanks are usually made of polyethylene or ABS plastic. And reason number two, when you sanitize a fresh water tank, the most commonly used solution involves a diluted bleach. Unfortunately, we can't use bleach to sanitize our water heater tank because our water heater tank has a metal lining. You never want to put bleach into a metal tank. So instead, we're going to use use distilled white vinegar. You can dilute the vinegar with water 50-50, or you can just use straight vinegar, but the process does not change. Either one's gonna work perfectly fine for what we need it to do. Now, before we drain the water heater, we wanna do two things. First, we want the water inside the water heater to cool down. Turn off all the power to the water heater, whether that's gas, electric, or both. After the water heater is off, just open a couple hot water faucets until you've cycled out all the hot water. Now, if you're parked in your driveway not using the RV like I am, you can just turn off the water heater the day before. Next, turn off the campground water source if you're using your city water connection. If you're drawing water from your fresh water tank, make sure you turn off your water pump. Now that the water has cooled, we can go ahead and drain the water heater. First, relieve the pressure in the tank by opening your temperature and pressure valve. Once that stops venting, close the T&P valve and remove this drain plug. When you close the T&P valve, it eliminates air from being able to return back into the tank. So when you pull that drain, it's not gonna shoot water all over you. Now, once you get out of the way, go ahead and open your T&P valve and it will let the water drain out quicker. Now, if you have an Atwood water heater, which is now owned by Dometic, you're going to have a drain plug. If you have a suburban water heater, you're going to pull out an anode rod instead of a plug. Now, a plugged water heater versus an anode rod water heater are definitely two different types of water heaters. But for what we're doing right now, there is no difference. The plug and the anode rod, for all intents and purposes, are just a way to drain the water heater. Now, there's something I wanna point out because I don't remember seeing anybody mention this, but it will help with the next step. This is a video for my borescope. Here is the water level with the drain removed. Now, if you open your low point drains, you'll see the water level drop even more. The moral of the story, you'll get more water out of your water heater by opening your low point drains than you will through the actual drain plug. It's something to remember when you wanna get as much water as possible out of your water heater. Next, what I do is rinse out the tank using this cleaning wand. I'll put a link down below to all the products in this video. It connects to your hose and I'll just spend a minute or two moving this around inside the water heater to dislodge or push out any calcium deposits that may be in there. After the tank has completely drained, close your low point drains and put your water heater in bypass mode, otherwise known as winterize mode. This will isolate the water heater from the rest of the plumbing system, which will prevent our solution from backflowing into the plumbing lines. It will also allow you to use your cold water faucets while our solution is sitting in the water heater and prevent you from drawing that solution out if you need to use a faucet. If you want a refresher on how to put your water heater into bypass, or winterize mode, I'll put a link to our video at the top of the screen right now. And remember, your T&P valve should be open while you're introducing your solution. Now it's time to introduce our cleaning or descaling solution. I have a six gallon water heater tank, so I'll be using six gallons of distilled white vinegar. Okay, there's a couple different ways to introduce our solution into the water heater. And all of these will mainly depend on what type of wet panel you have, except for one. The method we're using today is universal. Nothing needs to be done at your wet bay or to the valves on your wet bay. And this is why I like this method. It's easy, anyone can do it. All you need is access to your water heater drain. To get the solution into the tank, you'll need to make one of these. It will only cost you about $4 in parts from your local hardware store. And here is what you need.
need. If you're running an Atwood or Dometic water heater that uses a drain plug instead of an anode rod, chances are the size of your drain is half inch NPT. You wanna start with a half inch male NPT to a half inch pipe adapter. You'll also need a half inch 90 degree pipe elbow and at least two feet of half inch pipe. Now, if you removed an anode rod instead of a drain plug, chances are the size of your drain will be three quarter inch NPT. So in this case, you'll want a three quarter inch male NPT to a three quarter inch pipe adapter, a three quarter inch 90 degree pipe elbow, and at least two feet of three quarter inch pipe. You can use whatever size you want as long as they all fit together. I think it's just easier to use all half inch for Atwood or Dometic water heaters and use three quarter inch for all suburban water heaters because it's just much easier than trying to find reducers and adapters. Go ahead and put some Teflon tape on your fitting. Remember, if you're looking at the threads from where they enter the water heater, the tape needs to be applied clockwise so that it's not peeled back as you thread it. Now you might need a ratchet to tighten this adapter. However, we are not pressurizing the tank so you'll probably be able to get away with just hand tightening it. Next, cut off a six inch section from your pipe and push it into the threaded fitting. Now I say six inches because that's going to apply to most of us. Just make sure this piece of pipe extends out past your RV. Again, we are not pressurizing the tank, so you should not have to glue these pieces together. Next, push on your elbow, and last, put the pipe into the elbow. Now you can make this pipe as tall as you want, but what's important is that the pipe is higher than your water heater, so gravity will pull the solution into the tank. Next, with the help of a funnel, I'll add my six gallons of vinegar. You may notice some of the cleaning solutions start to come out of the TNP valve as you get close to filling your tank capacity. This is perfectly normal. Once you see this, just close your TNP valve and finish filling the tank to capacity. You can either call it a day or you can turn on your water heater while the solution sits. There's no right or wrong answer, but I do know that heating the vinegar solution will speed up the process, but either way will work perfectly fine. Now, if you do want to turn the water heater on, you should probably glue and cap this pipe because as the water heats, it expands and it may leak out of this pipe. I can't give you an answer, I don't know. I've never turned on the water heater using this method, but definitely worth noting, you probably again want to glue and cap this pipe if you're gonna turn your water heater on. Let it sit overnight and we'll come back in eight hours. So if you're enjoying or learning something from this video, please let us know by clicking that like button down below, leaving us a comment, and we hope that you consider subscribing. Now let's get back to the video. Okay, it's the next day. Now, if you turned on your water heater to help speed up that process, the first thing you wanna do before anything else is to make sure that you turn off your water heater, especially if you were using the electric side. Your heating element can burn out in a matter of seconds if there's no liquids in the tank. And also, if you did turn on the water heater, you may wanna let that cool down for a little bit after turning off the power. All right, guys, to drain your tank, just spin your pipe down. I'm gonna see if I can catch any calcium deposits that the descaling process cleaned up. Now you see this, this is why this process is important. This can build up in your water heater and block your plumbing lines. Now I'm pretty diligent with cleaning my water heater every year, so what you just saw is actually not that bad. Looks like some calcium and a little bit of dirt. But for those of you with an anode rod, as they break down, as they are sacrificed, pieces of the anode rod can break off into the tank. So if you have a suburban water heater, be prepared to see a lot more debris than I did. In a second, we're gonna run the bore scope through the water heater to see how well this process works. But first, I'll hit the water heater with the cleaning wand one more time for about a minute or two and then something I like to do is hit the threads of the tank drain with a plastic brush so any solids we did loosen up don't get stuck in the threads and prevent a perfect seal when it's time to close everything up. Here's some footage of the water heater before cleaning. Guys what you're seeing are solids, dirt, and buildup from just one year of camping. And here is footage of the tank after it's been cleaned. Now it's not a perfect system, but the tank liner looks much better and the water is much clearer now that we've gotten everything out. We're not done yet. Turn your water heater bypass valves back over to normal operating mode. Tape and reinsert your plug or anode rod. Fill up your water heater by just turning your water supply back on. And you're probably going to smell a little bit of vinegar in your water lines. It's not gonna hurt anything. To cycle that out, just turn on your hot faucets for a minute or two. Oh, and one more thing. RV fresh water tanks are usually made of something called pro poly poly heating up the water. <clears throat> if you're running an Atwood or Dometic water heater, <clears throat> now you might need to, reason number one, reason number one, Reason number one, RV, do it, let's do it, let's finish it up.